must during the stage of sadhana one should describe god with all his attributes one day hazra said to narendra god is infinity infinite are his splendor do you think he will accept your offerings of sweets and bananas or listen to your music this is a mistaken notion of yours narendra at once sank 10 fathoms so i said to hazra you villain where will these youngsters be if you talk to them like that how can a man live if he gives up devotion no doubt god has infinite splendor yet he is under the control of his devotees a rich man's gatekeeper comes to the parlor where his master is seated with his friends he stands on one side of the room in his hand he has something covered with a cloth he is very hesitant the master asks him well gatekeeper what have you in your hand very hesitatingly the servant takes out a custard apple from the cover places it in front of his master and says sir it is my desire that you should eat this the master is impressed by his servant's devotion with great love he takes the fruit in his hand and says ah this is a very nice custard apple where did you pick it you must have taken a great deal of trouble to get it god is under the control of his devotees king durjodhan was very attentive to krishna and said to him please have your meal here but the lord went to bidur's hut he is very fond of his devotees he ate bidur's simple rice and greens as if they were celestial food sometimes a perfect gyani behaves like a ghoul he does not discriminate about food and drink holiness and unholiness a perfect knower of god and a perfect idiot have the same outer signs a perfect gyani perhaps does not utter the mantras while bathing in the ganges while worshiping god perhaps he offers all the flowers together at his feet he doesn't utter the mantras nor does he observe the rituals a man cannot renounce action 
as long as he desires worldly enjoyment. As long as one cherishes a desire for enjoyment, one performs action. A bird sat absent-mindedly on the mast of a ship, anchored in the Ganges. Slowly, the ship sailed out into the ocean. When the bird came to its senses, it could find no shore in any direction. It flew toward the north, hoping to reach land. It went very far and grew very tired but could find no shore. What could it do? It returned to the ship and sat on the mast. After a long while, the bird flew again, this time toward the east. It couldn't find land in that direction either. Everywhere, it saw nothing but limitless ocean. Very tired, it again returned to the ship and sat on the mast. After resting a long while, the bird went toward the south and then toward the west. When it found no sign of land in any direction, it came back and settled down on the mast. It did not leave the mast again, but sat there without making any further effort. It no longer felt restless or worried. Because it was free from worry, it made no further effort. Captain Ah, what an illustration!